Okay. Tennis. 60 seconds. Never liked him. Well, hello and welcome to the show. Now, I wonder if you could tell me how many of you are taking part. Ah, the loner type. Can you tell me what your name is, please? Oh, uh, last thing. Do you want to do... Got it. 30 seconds. Your buzzer is the letter B, as in butcher every last one of them. Ooh, someone's in a hurry. Right, let's start the game! You got any cat goods on you, man? Come on, give us one. Let's have some fun. Here comes question one. Your choice is... We tell cloth speech suppressors. Get it right, and I'll give you three grand. Undercarriage down. Let's land this question. Which of the following cryptic clues does not reveal a comedy double act? Half a reverend in a five-pence coin, desert waterhole, an indistinct image, frozen rain and speed of movement, or Caesar's headwear and kisser of Nelson? Oasis and Blair are two completely autonomous and highly regarded pop groups. Oasis and Blair, not a comedy double act. <laughs> are you trying to kid me? On the list of categories, pick a category. Here comes question two. It'll make you feel brand new. Okay, let's have one called Who Ate All The Pies? Two thousand pounds ready and waiting for the right answer. The question is as follows. If Pavarotti performed a 1990 World Cup theme Ness and Dormer in the style of Le Pet Main, how did he perform that then? Underwater, backwards, in mime or anally? Le Petamain was famous for farting music. And here he is now. Bonjour, Monsieur Le Petamain. What are you going to play for us this evening? I will be playing uh, some experimental music uh, about the seasonal uh, weather change, but focusing mainly on the wind factor. Please select. And the category is... Radiation bullies! 3,000 quid for a right answer. There's a question coming. I can just smell it. Which of the following rays would have been given the nickname Stumpy for being the shortest in PE? Ultraviolet, X-ray, visible light, or radio? X-rays have the shortest wavelength. Of course, it's not the size of your ray that counts. It's the motion of your frequency. Right, fellas? OK, pick a category. Oh, well played, my son. Take my hand and walk with me to this or that country. And the category for this this or that question is... Don't go near the punch bowl. OK, then. Verily, upon this very screen shalt thou see seven separate points a flash. verily. And yea, it is your task to discern whether they be a disaster film or an alcoholic cocktail, sirrah. If you perceive a disaster movie, contact Ernest Borgnine by pressing key one. And if you think it's a cocktail, stick a little umbrella on key two. And press four to skip. For a right answer, you get 500 sheeps. And 500 off for each one you get wrong, or you don't get to. Wind the clock up to 30 seconds and let the bugger loose. Here do we go. Powering Inferno, disaster or boost? Twister! Silver Streak! Singapore Sling! Flaming Dragoon! Coming out quite clean. Last one, tequila. That's all seven. <laughs> yeah, very good. Anyone wrong? We need more people like you in our regiment. Yeah, well done, soldier. I'll just put some fairy dust on your score and press on. Using your brain, pick a category. Number five. Categorically, this is the category of juicy dog. You could be getting yourself 2,000 for the right answer. Oh, you smell that? That's the stench of question. If the following blue huckleberry hound were to be made of blue litmus paper and were dropped into a very giant glass of orange juice, <laughs> what colour would he be when he climbed up, the little hound? Blue, red, yellow or none, the little hound would be dissolved. <laughs> uh, Cedric a 
see the turns blue litmus paper uh, red. <laughs> but trust me, you don't want to see what happens to a blue dog on acid. <laughs> I do not take drugs. I against my religion, but I kill. Come on, this one. <laughs> And the next question is... I'm King Solomon. Fly me. Three thousand pounds if you get it right. Imagine Richard Branson undergoes a thorough religious conversion and becomes a Christian fundamentalist. Branson decides to rename his airline after the Old Testament prophet who famously flew. What does he call it? Pan Isaac, Air Ezekiel, Joshua Air, or Ezra Flot? Hello, Charlie. Oh. No, don't you know your Old Testament? The flying prophet was Ezekiel. Ezekiel, are pleased to predict our next flight will take off when the Moldings do breathe fire and the stars vanish from the night. From Gate 32. Choose a category. This one's called... What ails you? And this one's worth a thousand pounds. Come on, then you starting? If you're drinking ale with an ale wife, what are you doing? Shooting the breeze with a venereal disease, drinking like a fish with a fish, having a pilsner with a waitress from Pilsen, or getting liquored with a brewer's spouse? <laughs> no, that would be talking crap with the club. I mean, why didn't you pick? An ale wife's a fish, and ale's a beer like drink. Oh, I had terrific sex with the alewife last night. Oh, I done her up in fishnets, battered her, got the old man out and managed to fill it. <laughs> Fantastic. Categorically speaking, I want one! Here's why we hate number eight. And here we have... Cowboys and Maccabees. Give me a right answer. You got yourself 3,000 quid. Here's the question, fingers ready. If the Biblical Book of Ruth were a country and western song, what might it appropriately be called? Closest thing to heaven, this side of hell. You're so cold, your blood is antifreeze. Your son is dead, now I'm stuck with you. Or I'd walk 40 years if you'd leave for one. Your son is dead, now I'm stuck with you. Now Ruth's husband dies, right, and she feels bad for her mother-in-law. So she sticks around for the rest of her life. It could happen. Hey, guys! Choose a category. It's party time. Here comes number nine. So, you picked this one. Anorexin Skag. And this one's worth £2,000. OK, now I'd like you to imagine that sick boy in Renton decide to take a trip to Japan to do some real train spotting. If he wanted to put the bond train in his notebook using its Japanese name, what should Renton write? Jujitsu, no can do, Shinkansen or Sinyatsen? It's you, it's their boss. The boys would ride Shinkansen in their little book of numbers. <laughs> Did you get that f number? No, the f thing was moving too f fast! Pick a category now. Hey, Master Blaster! Won't you find an answer? It's ten! And the category is... Heavyweights Heavy of, of classical, classical music! music. And I'll give you £2,000 if you get it right. Mike Tyson has just lost a fight and he's drowning his sorrows at a post-fight party. Classical violinist Nigel Kennedy accidentally spills his beer over Mike Tyson. If you had to use classical music terminology to describe the speed at which Nigel legs it, what would you use? Fastissimo, prestissimo, pizzicato or largo? Oof, that hurt. <laughs> Nigel would remove himself prestissimo or very fast. Well, that's the first round over. Who's getting the next one in then? And of course, the beauty of round two is that there's twice as much cash available to win or to lose. Okay, pick a category. And the category is... Ancient Gods and Twiglets. And we are talking 4,000 quid for the right answer. Okay, it's the big one. The mythological gods of Greece and Rome were at the deity convention drinks party. Which Greek god might run into his Roman counterpart wearing exactly the same name tag? Dionysus, god of wine, Hades, god of the underworld, Hermes, messenger of the gods, or Apollo, god of beauty? 
Loser! The correct answer is... Both the Roman and Greek versions were named Apollo, but only one of them liked Moussaka. Please select... 12. In terms of category, this is... The campaign for unclear disarmament. As far as the sheets available, two grand is up for grabs. DEFCON 1! DEFCON 1, can you read me? Uh, according to my radar, the Soviet scumbags have launched a preemptive intercontinental ballistic missile strike. Oh, uh, hang on a minute. Oh no, I'm mistaken. They seem to have launched their intercontinental ballistic missiles. Beware of falling... Highly infectious viruses, woolly jumpers, church service books, or teenage girl dancers. <laughs> this is the answer. <laughs> it's raining mass books. So if you hear the four minute warning and think you haven't got a prayer, don't panic, there's some on the way. Using your brain, pick a catchphrase. And now, gateway to heaven. Two thousand pounds for this little baby. Friends. Everybody needs good friends. Ross and Rachel go down to the supermarket and buy something named after a member of the Society of Friends. What do they come back to the flat with? Blue Nun wine, Hamlet cigars, Goodfella pizza or Quaker oats. <laughs> Members of the Society of Friends are known as Quakers. <laughs> I generally get my oats around the back of the supermarket with this smashing little girl, uh, even does loyalty cards. Of course, I always use a condom, because that's the safe way, innit? <laughs> you got any categories on you, man? Come on, give us one. The one you chose was... I am in love, and I want the whole bloody world to know it. 6,000 notes if you get it right. Can you dig it? I want to tell the world about my fiance, the future Mrs. Cake. She's getting on a bit now, but I love her, and I really want you to know about her. She's statuesque. She's a goddess. She's simply got dozens of breasts, and she's from Ephesus. And she was one of the seven wonders of the world in her day. Who will she be when we're married? Mrs. Artemis Cake, Mrs. Carly Cake, Mrs. Gehenna Cake, or Mrs. Minerva Cake? Meet Artemis, the future Mrs. Cake, but keep your hands off her knockers. <laughs> no, not really. Breathe again, girls. She's only a mythological figure from ancient Ephesus that I'm pretending to marry for the sake of this question. <laughs> what a wind up. From the list of categories, pick a category. Oh, best butts fit mine hall. It's time for... The people in power have named this category How the Fruit Riots Began. Round two jibs, opening value, 10,000 crisp wallet fillers. Okay, I'm going to be taking cash away every 1.5 seconds, so the faster you are, the more you score. Righty-ho, what famous saying does this rhyming nonsense rhyme with? Get Breg's cue for mango. I must have fruit. It's often said in irritation. Like, is someone going to buzz in soon? It's a dancing analogy. <laughs> Come on, Nobby Nomates! <laughs> Shall we dance? It takes two to tango. It's just less fun when you're on your own. Choose a category. The name of this question is... Hold me tight. You give me the right answer, I'm going to give you £4,000. Fingers on the buzzers, here's the question. Let's say for the sake of argument that you're a stalactite and all your life you've dreamed of getting it together with a stalactite. If your dream comes true and you finally meet, what have the two of you created? A post, a column, a marriage or a masthead? Stalactites stick up while stalactites go down. Sometimes they come together and form a column. <laughs> K 
Come on, let's have one. <laughs> And this one's called Square Meals and your inner sense. You could be getting yourself 2,000 for the right answer. Chow down for this one. Big bold job. Hungry after baking him famous peanuts, but he chilly. Fancy a bowl of pasta with seashells fresh in his mind. He find himself gone too hard. Can't chigly tell ya tell ya who silly are penning me. Me not come out of them seeing them shell. Can't chigly at the pasta shell, man. Uh, yes, uh, so she was the first wearer of the shell suit. I thank you. Onwards and upwards, ragaman. Categorically speaking, I want one! Okay, we're gonna have one called... Babes from Babylon! And this one's worth £4,000. They live a long time in the Middle East. For example, the winner of Miss Mesopotamia 1997 BC is still around and still thinks she's a babe. Miss Mesopotamia decides to represent her land in next year's Miss World. Which country will she now represent? Jordan, Iraq, Egypt or Saudi Arabia? Yes, the ancient kingdom of Mesopotamia falls in what is now modern Iraq. Here she comes now. Her interests are breathing and dressing. And she likes to have a gas. And she doesn't look a day over 3,500. It's Miss Iraq. Hey, doesn't she look so damn good? Pick a category now. This one's called... This episode is brought to you by Ennui. Looks like a toughie. 6,000 is up for grabs. Okay, here it comes. If you were to cast Sesame Street characters in Samuel Beckett's play Endgame, who would be the best choice to play Ham's father? Grover, the Count, Oscar the Grouch, or Miss Piggy? It's just not happening, is it, for you? Now here's what someone intelligent would have said. Ah! In Beckett's play Endgame, Ham's parents live in rubbish bins. You know, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say I'd be goddamn grouchy if I had to live in a garbage can. Jesus. Choose a category. Superstar. Your special. 20. And you went for the one called... Iconoclastic Toys. Two thousand pounds ready and waiting for the right answer. Brace yourselves, here's the question. Supposing a leading toy manufacturer decides to cash in on the Sunday school market and release a new line of biblical toys, which baby doll might include a woven bulrush carrying case? Judas, Jesus, Moses or Jace? Uh, according to the story, Moses was sent adrift in a bulrush basket by his mother and was found by an Egyptian princess. <laughs> I'm currently abstaining from all earthly pleasures. I call it the Baby Moses Syndrome, because uh, I'm in denial. Uh, I also, whilst I'm still on the gag section of this question, ought to let you know that there's a new film out uh, on the Moses story. It's not completed yet, but apparently the baby looks terrific in the rushes. OK, pick a category. Jack attack time. If you see two words that match, buzz in. A oh, so you want to attack the attack? This is the clue. You're using me. I swear, Gerald means nothing. It's you I love.
over there in the presence of genius. How much lolly have you won? That's the game! Well, there you are. You are in possession of more worthless trivia than humanly possible. Uh, you can decide whether you want to be proud or ashamed of that fact. And while you're thinking about it, I'm going to tell you that... You don't know Jack! Okay, not bad, everyone. Good show, good show. Uh, let's run to commercials. And, Murray, can you let me know what's happening with the players, please?